Hello and welcome back to the shop. Um, this weekend I was actually planning on doing some machinist jacks, uh, but we're actually going to put that off until uh, the following weekend. Um, I had ordered some actual uh, indexable um, or inserted tool holders uh, for the lathe, and uh, those haven't come in yet and not going to come in until next week. Um, so I want to use those and test those out on the 1045 that we're going to be using for the, uh, the machinist jack. So we're going to wait on that. In the meantime, um, this weekend I'll probably just do a little bit more cleaning and organizing down here. Uh, plus I have all the parts to actually put together my table saw, so I got a motor for it and um, a few other things. So I'm probably going to do that this weekend. May Maybe make a video of it, maybe not make a video of it. We'll see. Um, but this week's this video here, I wanted to go over um, some home shop drill grinding fixtures and machines. So obviously, um, you know, if you got seven hundred and some odd dollars to to burn, um, a dedicated drill grinder is a really really nice tool and really really good around the shop. But most of us don't have seven hundred fifty dollars to burn. I mean, hell, that costs more than my lathe. Um, and you can pick yourself up a drill doctor for about 130 to 140 bucks, a 750, I believe 750X or SX or whatever they call it. This is an older version of that, um, but it's basically the same thing. There are some improvements on the new ones. I got this one for 15 bucks just to give it a shot. Um, so we're gonna kind of test this out and see how it goes. Uh, I also, for just for SNGs, have an old Craftsman attachment for a. Um, just a, a, a regular 8 inch uh, grinder. Um, so if we have some time maybe we'll set this up and see how this does. I have a feeling this is going to suck. Um, but let's get over here and we'll take a peek at both of these and uh, kind of go through and see how they work. Okay so here is our Drill Doctor and uh, like I said this is an older model. This is a 750 SP. Um, the new ones are labeled as an X. They're a little bit more low profile and you kind of have the, the little sharpening jig part over here. Um, these are capable of doing up to a half inch with one um, little chuck and then up to three quarter with the second chuck. Uh, I don't have the smaller chuck. All this came with was the larger one which does half inch to three quarter. So I'm a little hamstring by that but like I said um, I just picked this up just to see if these were actually worth uh, investing any kind of money into or if they were just ab absolute you know garbage so and I'm missing uh, there's supposed to be a little plastic piece in here and this is the side that would allow you to split the points um, I'm missing the little insert in there uh, but that's not a huge thing that won't really uh, do anything for our testing so what this basically consists of is um, an alignment jig which is this whole section here and you have different um, settings on this. This is capable of doing uh, a masonry bits, the carbide tip masonry bits, um, 135 degree drill bits and 118 degree drill bits. So depending on where you have the setting, um, kind of cans the drill one way or another to get you that angle. And it does have a little drill gauge here so you can measure your drill on it uh, and go from there. Plus it also has a little slider here that's kind of a pain in the ass to pull out and move. but you pull that out and move and that will actually change the angle of the chuck uh, itself for your drill bits. So that is hopefully that's Jesus hopefully that's one thing that they changed on the new ones because that moving that kind of sucks. Um, and as you can see everything is numbered to idiot proof it so you have step one, step two, step three and step four if you want to split the point. Um, and like I said, this whole section here is an alignment jig for your chuck, so you put your drill bit in there, and there are a couple little tabs in here that will allow you to, uh, you can kind of see them down there, will allow you to um, align your check correct, your drill bit correctly in the chuck, and then your chuck and drill go into this little doohickey here, and as you turn it, you can see there's little lobes that are making it move up and down as you spin it and that's going to give you your drill relief angle and is ground by this uh, diamond wheel in there. Um, so I've never used one of these before so um, we're going to read the instructions and we're going to kind of go through how to do this. 
Okay, so, you know, going through the, um, the instructions here a little bit, we have a layout of what's uh, on the unit. We have, you know, c congratulations for buying our product. And um, I like this sentence here. Is, Keep in mind that learning to shop in jewel bits like learning to ride is like learning to ride a bike. T it takes a few tries to get it right. So you should expect that it may take a couple of drill bits to get the point. Drill sharpening humor there. Love it. Okay, so um, going by the steps on here, <laughs> what you need to do is figure out whether you have 118 degree, 135 degree drill bit. We know we have 118 degree, so our tabs add 118 degree. And if you don't know, here's a guide for 118 and 135 degree. Um, the second thing we need to do is we need to adjust this little tab um, to either do our 135 degree, our uh, masonry bit, or a standard bit. Now, what I find weird in here is in the instructions, it shows a masonry bit, a regular bit, and a split point. And, and a, I'm sorry, a masonry bit, a split point, and standard. And it shows little icons of the drill bit, like like it is here. But mine only has a minus, a drill bit, and a plus. So just going by the position they're showing, that's 118 degrees. Now what you want to do is take a chuck and just loosely tighten that bit in there. And if you look at this, there's a set of flats there that have to line up with a set of flats in this little um, adjustment rig here. So we want to pop this sucker in and rest it against those flats. And let me get a light in here. Let me see if I can get this in here pretty good. It's kind of hard to get the angle. My IKEA light here. Come on, you. Okay, I think that's as good as we're gonna go. So then you wanna press this tab down, and when I do, if I can get my fat finger out of the way, you can see that those tabs open and close. So you wanna open those tabs, make sure that this chuck is on its flats, hold it in place, push with the heel of your palm in, and let the drill bit touch the stop in the back. And then you wanna turn the bit until those two little tabs close around the actual flutes themselves and hold it and still making sure that you're on the flats which we are and make sure everything's in there properly we want to tighten and I think this is where you get most of your kind of slop and screw ups is right here so now we're tightened in and that should technically be um, where this drill belongs the other thing that we need to do um, when we put this in here to start grinding in which I screwed up on my first try I was really jamming this sucker in and turning super super slow um, and that kind of screwed up my my relief on it um, it gave me actually a, a negative relief angle and it, it really really screwed everything up um, I found that when I put it in and did light cuts and turned it really fast um, it made a much better finish and gave me uh, almost a perfect angle also, the other thing is, um, this, when it fits in the chuck, you can see the two lobes on it. There's one lobe here, there's a valley, and a lobe here. Now, this machine will only cut when you're in the valley. So, um, kind of start, you can see a little white little dot there. Start on one of the hills and make sure you have enough turn in your wrist to be able to, at the same speed and same pressure pushing in, turn it to the other lobe. Um, you don't want to stop in the middle of the valley. The other thing too is you can see that this pivots. So um, I think a tendency of what I was screwing up last time too is when I was pushing in, um, I was forcing this to not be able to turn. By having a much lighter grip on it, uh, it's able to go through its whole pivot thing. Um, if it doesn't do that, then that's going to screw up your grind hardcore. Um, so we're actually, I'm going to speed this up. Um, and I'm actually gonna gonna time it, and uh, I'm gonna see how that how actually how long this actually takes. Uh, so let me figure out how to. What's my stopwatch here? Mm, stopwatch. So we're actually gonna time this as we do it, um, and we need to plug the machine in. That would help too.
So I'm going to start it off so you can hear the sound of it actually grinding, what it actually sounds like, and uh, we'll see how long it actually takes me to grind a drill bit, and I'll fast forward through all this board stuff. So here we go. Okay, this one took me a little over 15 minutes, but... Um, just slow as crap, but... Um, this angle was way, way, way off, so it, it took a lot of grinding. Uh, if you were just freshening it up a drill bit, which is what we'll do next, it will probably take less. Um, just this angle was off a lot. And actually, um, you can kind of see what it looks like here. And uh, there's the chisel point. Now the biggest problem that I see with this, in all honesty, is these little tabs, these little paws here that are supposed to come out and grab your drill bit. Um, that are actually hidden from camera. If I can slide in this way, you can see, see, see these guys. Those come out and grab the flutes. The problem is when you press this tab, you can see I can open up one instead of the other. And when you put it in and it grabs a drill bit, let me just grab a drill bit to kind of demonstrate. It's kind of a pain in the butt to demonstrate, but um, hmm. yeah, you can see, there we go. You can see it there. All right, you can see when it grabs a drill bit there, um, when you push it in and let it go, you can see right now, on. one is grabbing a little further down on the drill bit than the other one. You have to make sure that when you put this thing in, that both of those grab in exactly the same spot. Because if they don't, I know the camera angle kind of sucks here. If they don't, if they cockeye it a little bit, let me actually demonstrate with the drill bit I used. Um, so you put that in there, you push these out, push the drill bit into that, push these out, push the drill bit into the stop, push the flat on the doohickey. All right, so you see how it grabbed the drill bit there? See how the, this one here is in further than this one? You have to be damn sure that those things, you have to manipulate them a little bit, which is a pain in the ass. But you have to make pretty damn sure that those grab on the same spot on both sides of the drill bit. Because if you don't, then this thing is off at an angle and what it will screw up is not necessarily your 118 degree uh, angle you drill bit, but it'll screw up your chisel point and it'll skew it off to the side. Um, so this one actually doesn't look too bad. Let's measure it up against the drill gauge. Get this out of the way. Put something white over here. So We're off slightly, but not too, too bad at all. Um, we're pointing, say, right at the line before the eight there. And here we're pointing right at the line before the eight. And here we're pointing just about at the line before the eight, maybe just slightly, slightly off. Um, but actually, let's go over to the, actually, well, let me just do one, a, a larger one. Let me do, um, let me get a silver endeming that has a chip in it. I think I got one somewhere. So here's a 5 eighths. I could use a little bit of, uh, freshening. Not... There we go. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing. You got you to gotta loosen the chuck, but I can still move it. I'm going to put this in place here and get some light so I can see what I'm doing. Extend those paws 
let it grab the drill bit on the flutes. Make sure they both grab together in the same spot, which I think is the biggest pain in the ass of this thing. Okay, that looks pretty good. We're locked on the flats. We'll tighten this sucker up. And uh, we'll just freshen this guy up. So this is a pretty decent drill bit, a little worn. And uh, we're going to time this one too. So freshening this one up, it took me about two and a half minutes, this wasn't that bad. You can see it there. That's where I do have a little chip on the edge, but that's not on the cutting edge, that's further back. You can take the time to grind that out, only thing it'll take you forever on this thing, so you have to take all of that. Um, but the actual cutting edge doesn't look too bad, chisel point's pretty good. And pretty much straight on the angle we need to be. Maybe just slightly, slightly off, but not by much. Point at 10 there. And we're pointing at... nine there, or halfway between nine and ten. So chisel point, slightly, slightly off, but not by much. Um, but it'll definitely cut a hole. Okay, yeah, we're gonna be drilling into a uh, three-quarter inch piece of aluminum, and we're just looking for equal chips coming off the flutes. slow this down so we can see that a little bit better. Okay. You can tell by the chips here, between this and this guy here, that we are leading a little bit. We made a hole. Um, we'll see if we can measure that. Yeah, one flute is not really cutting really well on that, I can tell by the finish. Uh, we'll try the other one and see if it's any better.
All right, um, I'm gonna slow that down in slow motion, but it didn't look too bad, and uh, this hole definitely looks a lot better. We'll go over to the um, to the de to the desk again, and we'll compare them. Um, I'm very very disappointed in that, and I'm glad I only paid fifteen dollars and not a hundred and hundred and thirty. Uh, that's for goddamn sure, but. We're going to try something else. We're going to take these exact same drill bits and we're going to go um, kind of an older method here and probably crappier, but we'll give it a shot. And what we have here is an old Sears. This is an old Craftsman. It, I don't, it has the old crown, so I don't know exactly how old this is. But this is a drill bit sharpening attachment for just a bench grinder. And instructions are on the back here. And um, I think you can actually still get these from Enco and they'll cost you about 20 bucks or something like that. And uh, basically what this does is bolt next to your grinder and uh, you set the angle of your drill according to the instructions. And you pop your drill in here and get it all set up according to the instructions. And then you basically swing it across the, the side of your grinder wheel here, uh, which I don't particularly like, but you know, that's what it says. I, I like the... Uh, I like the note in here. It says, note, instructions for the use of the number 6677 Craftsman Drill Grinding Attachment indicate that twist drills should be sharpened on the flat side of the grinding wheel. Although all Craftsman grinding wheels are marked with the statement, never grind on si side of wheel. This statement is not intended to apply to this grinding attachment. Um, so don't do it, but it's okay to do it with this apparently. So I'm going to see if there's a way I can get this set up on my 8-inch uh, my grinder over there. And uh, kind of temporarily, we'll probably have to clamp it down with some C-clamps or something. And we'll see if this actually works. Um, I'll set it all up here and get the drill in place at the, at the bench. And then uh, we'll go over there. So I'm going to read these instructions and kind of figure out how this sucker goes together. Okay, so um, we get everything clamped down. This isn't going anywhere. Every part about this don't look kosher. Um, basically what you have here is a little tab on the front that holds against the cutting edge. Um, so that holds your vertical angle there. And you have an angular selector here which goes from 49 degrees to 86 degrees. So we're half of that. So we're 59 for the 118 degree. And um, what you do is there's a little clamp here, spring loaded, and a thumb screw, and a kind of a feed rod here. So what you do is you adjust this slide here to the back so you have just a little bit of the drill bit sticking beyond this little um, little edge here. And um, you basically swing it across the side of your grinding wheel. And then every time you do that, you feed in with this screw here until you get that um, angle perfectly um, ground, perfectly vertical, you know, not taking off anymore. Then you feed up this stop and then you turn the drill bit to the other flute, back it off, and come into your stop. So um, that's how this works and what we're going to do is I have to stand over here with the camera is something along those lines there. So I'm going to stand to the side so when this thing grenades, at least I don't get it in the face. Um, I'm wearing my gloves just in case and i um, wearing a face shield just in case because uh, this goes against everything that I want to do. But for YouTube, we're going to do it. Um, hey, you got to plug in the grinder first. Step number one, they didn't mention that in the instructions, plug in the grinder. Okay.
I'll be damned if I can get this in focus, actually. Come on. There we go. That didn't do a half bad job. Um, didn't do a half bad job at all. That actually looks better than the drill doctor. I'm going to get my angle gauge and I'm going to measure this and I'll let you know how it comes out. Okay, one flute is slightly, and I mean slightly, um, longer than the other. And considering what we were just doing to that, um, that isn't bad. And I know everybody's going to ask, what did it do to the side of the grinder? Um, it really didn't do much, actually. Here's the grinding wheel there. You can see the black mark there. Um, there's no groove, no, no change in the in the actual um, wheel itself. In other words, I can't feel a ridge or anything. I mean, eventually, could you wear that out? Yup. Would I want to do this on my grinder that I use every day? Nope. Um, could I get a cheap old piece of garbage grinder and use it? Probably. Um, we'll see if this uh, grinds out any better. That's just a embedded metal. There's no wear in that stone at all. Again, um, not necessarily something I would want to use every day. But maybe you can take this and, uh, you know what this would probably be good on is, um, setting up, setting up with a, uh, like a belt sander. Um, I bet you that would actually work out pretty good if you set it up with the belt sander right along the belt. Um, that would probably make a nice service. The only thing I did notice, though, is, um, and I don't know if this actually makes a difference, your actually grain of your metal now is going with the uh, cutting edge. So whereas if you were to grind it yourself or use the drill doctor, the grain of the grind is going um, perpendicular um, with the cutting flute. So I don't know if that would actually make a difference in the uh, longevity of the bit, but um, we'll give it a shot. We'll drill a hole with this and see how it looks. Well guys, um, hmm, proof is in the pudding. Um, I mean, I, I could tell just by doing it how even the chips were coming off of that. And um, I mean, you could even tell just looking at it, the, um, the chisel point here, let's get zoom in a little bit. The chisel point is a little bit better of an angle on there. This one's a little too much. Um, the flutes on this here, like I said, are a little uneven. You can tell uh, compared to this one, which is straight. And the biggest thing that you can tell by these is, um, get a white background here. The biggest thing, if I can kind of get these lined up side by side here and zoomed in. All right, look at the difference in that in that relief angle. Here's the drill doctor one, and that's my problem right there. Is my relief angle is all wrong on these bits. Um, there's almost none there, and you can see on the one I just used, you got pretty much the perfect relief.
Now, like I said, the only the only difference between them is I don't know if the light will catch this the correct way, or if I can get the light to catch it the right way. Come on, you might be able to see it there and there if I. All right, you can see here. All right, you can see the grain of the metal is going with the cutting edge, whereas on the drill doctor one. It's more like your hand ground, it's swirled with, uh, against the cutting edge, perpendicular to it. So I don't know if that would make a, a difference in, uh, in actual wear of the drill bit. Um, but out of both of these, I like this one better. And um, this one, brand new, will cost you around $130. This one, brand new, will probably cost you around $15. I got this for uh, two bucks. And it was brand new in the box. Would I use it with a grinder? No, no, you'll, you'll wear out the, the side of your grinder eventually. Um, your best bet is to get something like a dedicated uh, little belt sander, even the little one inch belt sanders you can get from Harbor Freight for like 30 bucks. Um, but it'll probably work pretty decent with this, to be honest with you. Uh, just dedicate that to a drill grinding rig, and, and, and there you go. Um, and you have all different kinds of angles up there, all, all the way up to. Um, 135 and everything else so um, the only thing you can't do with this that you can do with that is split the point but other than that <laughs> I like this a lot better anyway um, just could you probably get this to work with some tweaking yeah are the new wheel models different than this yeah um, but I mean y you guys just saw the uh, the difference I got in, in, in drill grinds and chips out of there. Um, uh, well, well, which ones would you guys rather have? So I, I found that really interesting. I'm, I'm very, very disappointed with the Drill Doctor. And if I spent $130 for this thing, um, I'd want to cry. <laughs> so, um, yeah. that's the, this, this is completely the opposite uh, that I thought this would turn out, to be honest with you. So... So there you go. And uh, um, drill doctors, I think, are pretty highly contested. You, you, reviews are all over the board on this, but um, yeah, definitely not my thing. And I'm glad I only paid $15 for it. And I'll probably um, either sell it or give it away. I don't know. I, that is not hanging around anymore. This will stay, though. Um, so kind of hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, uh, this weekend, I'm probably just going to uh, clean up here a little bit and uh, put together my table saw. I might make a few videos of that and we'll wait for the um, the insert holders to come in and we'll start playing with the uh, machinist jacks. And here's some um, inserts for that. These are carbide inserts. They're CCMT inserts. Um, and the two holders I got are the AR, the half inch AR Warner set. Uh, with some high-speed steel bits and also, like I said, some carbide bits. So uh, we'll play play with those when we do. Uh, we're going to be using 1045 on the machinist jacks, and uh, we'll see how these fare up on the nine inch and see if um, you know it can take carbide and uh, go from there. And see how it works out. So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, just to show you real quick, here's a drill doctor hole. Here's the Craftsman drill grinding jig hole. So, you guys be the final judge.